Good morning, church. Uh, Happy New Year to all those that we have been talking to and mentioning. We praise God that the Lord has allowed us to come into another year of 2021. And with all the challenges that life has been, we want to say to you, uh, to God be the glory for another opportunity to go into another year for God's glory and for his honor. We know that uh, now that we're into probably, I would take maybe the 10th month of this uh, pandemic that we've been uh, closed down. And then now some places are opening up and there are vaccines that are being passed out. I was just the other day in the doctor's office and the nurses was telling me, matter of fact, alert, she had just went up and had her shot and the doctors had had their shot. So we're on our way. And I, I just look at 2021 as being uh, a, a transitional year for us, especially as the body of Christ. And this is time for us to, to really open up and start sharing the good news about Jesus Christ, what he has done for us in 2020, uh, bringing us through this pandemic and even going into 2021, a whole new outlook. And I know a lot of times when we come to this time of the year, there are many people who set uh, New Year's resolutions and things like that. I'm not big on those, but one of the things that we ought to be doing is at least um, – Focus and saying that, you know, I'm, I'm going to give the Lord more this year. When I say that, more of your time, more of your resources, more of your worship, because he is more deserving of all of that. So we praise God for his goodness and his mercy. With that further being said and done this morning, we want you to um, take your Bibles and turn to the book of, uh, book of Romans. The book of Romans. The Romans, the, the eighth chapter, we'll be reading for our scripture reading, responsive reading. For those that know that we do use the uh, ESV here, uh, so we're going to ask you to take your Bibles and turn to Romans, the 8th chapter. We'll be reading verses 31 through 39. Once again, as Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 39. When you have it, I know I always say, say amen, so amen to you. So let us read together. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how he will not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is it condemned? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, our distress, our persecutions, our famines, our nakedness, our danger, our swords? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy and righteous word. This time we're going to ask that as we uh, start this year off, and this is a thing that I want all of us to do, and even though I'm praying up here, I want you to pray in your homes and those that are here with us this morning that you would pray there that we would all be on one accord for what God is doing. So without further ado, let's look to the Lord. Oh, gracious and eternal God, our Father, makers of these heavens and the earth, the God that was, that is, and always will be. We come once again, O oh God, before your most holy throne this morning, Father, just to say thank you. We want to thank you, Father, how you have brought us over the threshold into this year of 2021. We want to thank you, Father, for the trials. We want to thank you for the heartaches. We want to thank you for the struggles that all that we went through in 2020, Father, that let us know, Father, that you are still faithful in the midst of all that we're doing. We want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Father, who have given us the wonderful privilege to come into your presence and not having to creep, Father, but we can come boldly, Father, with assurance knowing that we ask anything according to your will. This is the confidence that we have, that we ask anything, you heareth us. And if you hear us, we have what we ask for. 
So this morning, Father, as we enter into this, go into this new year, into another time of just uh, coming together to worship and to prayer, we want to pray, O oh God, for our country as a whole, Lord, and this world, Father, going down this time, this pandemic, Lord, that you have allowed us to see another year. Lord, and we pray right now, O oh God, that you would also be with the, uh, those, uh, the new officials, Father, uh, President-elect and the Vice President-elect, O oh God. We continue to ask in the Lord that you would be with them. We continue to uh, Lord, ask in the oh God that you would continue to be with the scientists and the doctors and the first responders, Lord, that who are out there, Lord, putting themselves on the line that we can, Father, live in peace. Then, Lord, we pray, O oh God, for also, Lord, just the members of Good News Church, Father. Lord, you know each one by name because you're all-knowing God. And, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you know who they are and what they're standing in the need of. We pray, O oh God, even as I pray here, Lord, that they are praying with me, Lord. And I pray right now, Father, for that one that is struggling. Lord, that you would give them comfort. Let them know, Father, that thy will will be done in their lives if they just look unto you, Father, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Then, Lord, we pray, Father, for even your word this morning, Father, the word that you have given me to start this year off. We pray, Father, that you would open up the hearts and the minds of your people. Lord, they won't just be hearers of your word, but doers, Father. And, we, Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would give us a word of encouragement this morning. Lord, that we will not look at this in a time of defeat, but realizing that the scripture has said that we're more than conquerors through him that love us, Father, and that there's nothing that can separate us from your love, oh God, nor life, nor death, nor things present, nor things that come, Father. We are trusting today, Father, in what your word has said. Now, Lord, we ask, oh God, as I prepare to break the bread of life, God, search my mind. And the Father, if it's anything that's not pleasing in your sight, I ask forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all God's people said with me, Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, it's, it's just, as you can see, I'm excited just to even, I give an opportunity to be able to come and to preach God's word. Um, this message that I have for you is a continuation and for this three week series that I have. Last week we talked about that, uh, not letting your present situation, uh, change how you look to the future of your hope in Jesus Christ. But today I want to talk to you about God's enduring love. God's enduring love. I want to pause for a moment and just say something about this enduring love. As I laid there last night, it was kind of about maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I was wide awake, and I was thinking about just this subject, that, uh, and I, I chose this thing. And I thought about it, and I, I was sitting there, and, I, and the, my wife was, you know, she was laying beside me, she was, and I woke up, I said, are you awake? And, and she said, yes, I'm awake, I, I don't know why. But for a moment, and I said, do you realize, and I was telling her, I said, do you realize this year will be 44 years that we actually have been together? 44 years. And then as I, and she went there and she said, uh, you know, went on, went, went back to sleep. But my point is this here, enduring love. Under those 44 years, I probably have took her through, through more things in her life than she would ever have done. And I would think, you know, but yet here it is 44 years later and we're still together. And what am I trying to say for us? That no matter what we go through in life and the trials and the struggles in our life, God's love never ends. Nothing can separate us. And true love only gets stronger as it goes on. I'm reminded of a, a bishop Carl Austin, who used to be the bishop over here in the Western Diocese back in the, uh, uh, the 90s. And he, he used to say something when he was always talking about him and his wife. And I got a chance to see him in his later years, how this even became true. He used to say, people was asking, how, how is your marriage lasting? How's it lasting? And he would say, only the Lord. Well, I want to tell you today, if you're going to make it in 2021 and your life is going to have any impact in your life, it's going to be because only the Lord and it's going to be because of his enduring love. Now, not your love for him, but God's love for you. And somebody need to hear that this morning because uh, you may have been in a marriage or you may be dealing with some situations in your home or you've been dealing with it in society, feeling unloved by yourself. But I'm here to tell you today, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord Savior, then I'm telling you, his love is enduring. Matter of fact, it tells us in the psalm, it's everlasting to everlasting. So without further said, I, I know I said a whole lot on the front porch of that message about God's enduring love. But I want to tell you that God's love never ends for you. 
So now, as we get into this message this morning, we're going to talk about just kind of introductory. We have now, we've all crossed over to this, this uh, threshold of this new, whole new year after experience a year of like no other. And we can't say 2020 was like no other year in my life. I had a person ask me the other day, and they said, have you ever experienced anything like this in your life? No. Here it is. I'm 61 years old. I've never experienced it. But I, as a matter of fact, we celebrated just my grandmother's 101st birthday on yesterday. And even at that point, and she could tell you she had never experienced anything in the 101 years that she's been here on earth, anything like this. But to God be the glory, which brought about, about you know, this year here brought about a whole lot of uncertainties. Which I don't think any one of us can, anybody here or listen to me can say, you are not affected in one way or another in 2020. But for those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we can give all glory and honor and praise to God for his abiding and his enduring love through it all. Let me say that again. If you know Jesus Christ in your Lord and Savior and all that you went through in 2020, we can give him praise. We can give him glory and honor through it all because of his abiding and his enduring love through it all. Through all of that, God never stopped loving us. Our failures, he never stopped loving us. Matter of fact, I believe Andre, Andre Crowell said it well in his song, Through It All. And, you know, as I was writing this and I thought about it, I wish I could sing, but y'all know I can't. So I'm just going to read this to you, what it says here. Andre Croft said here, he said, I've had many tears and sorrows. I have questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come only to make me strong. Through it all, through it all. He said, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Then he said, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend on God's word. So I'm here to tell you how you're going to make it through it all is depending on God's word. And that's why I want to open up to you this morning here on this Sunday of the first Sunday of 2021. To learn to depend on God's word. If you're going to make it in 2021, it can't be how you feel. It can't be how people treat you. It can't be what you want and things like that. You're going to have to depend on God's word. And in God's word, it teaches us about his enduring love. His enduring love. And Paul, I believe that Paul here is this very thought he had in mind when he wrote this latter part of this wonderful eighth chapter, which we started preaching on last week. Well, he's already told us, and here's some things that I want you to just be close attention to what he have already said. It tells us in Romans uh, 8 and 1. Romans 8 and 1, he said, now there is what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Talk about this in tour in love. When you're in Christ, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And then he didn't stop there in Romans 8 and 3. He says here, for God has done, for what God, for God has done what the law couldn't, for what the law weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his son, own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Talking about God's enduring love. And not only that, then he goes to uh, 8, 14. He says here, for all who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Talking about those who are in Christ Jesus. And 8, 15, B says here, you have, but you have received the spirit of adoption as son. By whom you we call, we cry, Abba, Father. Why? Because of God's enduring love. There is no condemnation for you. What the law could not do, it was weak in the flesh. God sent his son in the likeness of his sinful flesh. And then for those many that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. And for those that he says here, I love this verse here. It says, but we have received the spirit of adoption as sons. By whom we can cry, Abba, Father. That word, Abba, Father, means my daddy. Why? Because God's love never ends. And then it goes on and said, it tells us, now we are, well, he says we are adopted as sons. That means we are children of God. Amen. And not only children of God, but heirs of God and in joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That comes with God's enduring love. You are God's children. You are what? Heirs of God means whatever belongs to God belongs to you. And you're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If I, you didn't bring your amens with you, I got one for myself. 
Thank the Lord that I'm heirs and the children of God. And not only that, he tells us we have the first fruits of the Spirit. In other words, once you're saved, he's given you the Holy Spirit, then you know that God has saved you. And then we have a spirit. Then I love this one. The Spirit helps us in our infirmity by making intercessions for us. All of these things here is with Christ. This is God's enduring love for you and I. So when you're going back there, I'm not telling you to trust in how you feel or, or what's going on in society, but you've got to depend on what God's word says about you. And then here's the verse that we all know in Romans 8 and 28. And what did he say? And we know that what? All, what, what? We know that all things work together for those together. All we know for those who love God, all things work together for good. Amen. I like that. Everything that we went through in 2020, God was working it out for your good. All the things that you're going to go through in 2021, some's going to be some good days, some's going to be some bad days, there's going to be some despondent days, but they're all working together for your good. For who? For not for your glory, but for God's, for your good, but for God's glory. Then Paul makes a statement of all statements concerning the believer's security in Christ. And the reason what we need not fear our past, what was behind us in 2020, our present, what we're going through right now, and what's going to be tomorrow. Here, and that's because of God's endless and enduring love. He says here in Romans 8 and 31, which is going to be at the heart of what I want to talk to you about here. In Romans 8 and 31, he says here, what then shall we say to these things? What are these things? All these things that I just talked to you about. There's no condemnation there in Christ Jesus. For what the law could not do, there was weak in the flesh. God sent us in the likeness of sin fell flat. For not only are you and I uh, adopted as sons of God, we are the children of God. We are heir, joint heirs with God. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And not only that, we have first fruits of the Spirit. What shall we say to all these things? All these things? So what is it? What is it about the, all these things? Here is God's, he says here, if God be for us. Come on, somebody this morning. Who can be against us? So no matter what this life may bring, I don't care what struggles it may, it may be a job, it may be at home, it, it may be your body, it may be the doctor giving you some bad news, but if God be for you, come on, somebody, who can be against us? And the key is us. Who's he talking? He's not speaking to everybody. He's only talking to those who belong to Jesus Christ. The world can't claim this verse because he said, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you are his enemy. But those who are in Christ, he said, therefore, being justified by what? Faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And by that, we have access into the grace with which we stand. How do you know that? Because why? God's enduring love. Amen. Let me slow myself down because I think I'm about ready to run. Praise the Lord. There's a lot. So what did I say here? And I want you to see this again. God's enduring love. In this next screen here that you see here, and I wanted to say here, and you see the sky here. And, and when I was sitting there putting this together, and I said, you look at the rays that are coming down. What's so beautiful about that means that God's love is like his, his, his mercy is everlasting. God's love never runs out. The ray of life, and I don't care what you're going through. And I'll tell you, 2020 brought some bad times for some people. We lost some loved ones. We lost some people that were close to us. And there are people that have lost jobs. And there are people out there who are struggling. And there are people who are even struggling right now. But I want to let you know, if you know Jesus Christ, don't trust in your situation, but base your life as, as uh, Andre Krause said, through it all, you learn to trust in God. You learn to depend on God's word. Amen. And there's a lot can be said about what Paul is saying in these closing verses that we'll be speaking to you about. But what I'd like to say to you, this is an overwhelming theme in all of this here is God's love for you and I. God's love for those who belong to him. There is a difference that God's love for, for when he said God so loved the world, the cosmos, God loves the people. But what he does, he calls us his beloved. We are his chosen. And that's something to be excited about. He has done all that he can do to leave us without a doubt that his love for us never ends. Even though by natural, our natural birth, we're sinful. We're wicked. As a matter of fact, earlier he tells us in Romans 
that, uh, it's that we, you and I have nothing to boast about. And just follow with me here because sometimes we need to look back and see what you really were. Because some of us think you've been saved 10 minutes and you think you're better than somebody else. But let me show you what, how God saw you before you came to Christ. In Romans in the uh, third chapter, verses 10, he says, as it is written, there is what? None righteous, no, not one. Now, I don't care how many times you open the doors to the church, um, how many prayer meetings you have been, how many Bibles you open without Christ and would become him, there is none righteous. No, not one. Then he said there was no one that understands. In other words, you, you don't understand what God, there are none, no one seeks for God. You weren't you looking for God. The Holy Spirit found you. He said, all have turned aside together and they have become what? Here, here, here it is. I know you don't like to hear, but you have become what? Worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Then here, for those who got bad mouth, don't know how to close their tongues, he said, their throat is an open grave. They use their tongue to deceive. In other words, they lie. Tell not, they don't tell the truth. Their venom is ass under their lips. This is the way you were before Christ. But here's the wonderful thing about it. And here, we were, we, we were unlovable. But yet he tells us in Romans 5 and 8, this is what God says here. But God showed his love, what? Towards us, when, right? In spite of uh, how sinful we were. I don't know about you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is God's enduring love. Knowing how wicked you are, how much you, you're cursing, and, and how you were not righteous, you were worthless, and that your, your throat was an open grave, which means all you knew is how to cut people down and curse. But God loved you when you were yet sinners. And for somebody who's watching this today, you're going into 2021 and say, well, you know what? I, I don't think I'm, I'm not ready to get right with God. God says, even though you're in your sin, God loves you. But he wants you to know that he sent his only begotten son to die for you. And if there's anything that should motivate us to persevere in 2021 is knowing in spite of how sinful and loving we are, we're to depend on God's word. No matter what you're doing, we need to depend on God's word. Why? Why do we need to do that? Tell us here. God is what? It's for us. Right? God is for us. I'm not talking about the world. You know, you don't have any friends. You figure you're by yourself. I don't need anybody. But if God is for us, who can be against us? My question is, who's on your side? Amen? I, I like that commercial. And, and uh, I think it's, it's Capital One. And they said, What's, what you got in your pocket? Well, I'm going to tell you, who's on your side? Is God in your pocket? He tells us here in Romans 8 and 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? This very statement here, and this, this has been my life verse here, because there are times that, you know, I felt, you know, I always wanted to be liked by people, wanting people to accept me and things here, and all these things here. And I come to realize, when I found out who I am in Christ and what Christ is in me, I realized, if people don't like me, it doesn't matter, because if God is for me, who can be against us? See, this verse, Paul lets us know that once again, that when you are in Christ, when you're living for the Lord and you're trying to, we're living in a hostile environment in this world. That's why he said, if God is for us, because why? He was telling, this, telling them in Rome, if you're living for the Lord and you trust in God, even in 2021, you're going to live in some hostile times. People aren't going to want to know that you know Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, it'll cause you sometimes to be disowned by your family, ridiculed by your friends, and some people even see you as a Jesus freak in the world. Amen. They say, it don't take all of that. Well, I'm going to tell you, it don't take it for you, but I'm here to tell you, I know God is for me, so whoever's against me, it doesn't matter. Jesus even warned his disciples about this same thing, because he knew that once he was leaving, they're going to follow him. He tells them in Matthew 10, verses 21 and 22. Look what he said. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents, and they will put them to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end, what? Shall be saved. Amen. It's not, it's not about what you do, but God loving you. So what am I trying to say? And this sounds like 2021 right here. Father against father, father and brothers against brothers, sisters against sisters. It says children of disobedience to parents. Don't that sound like 2021? 
Amen. So God is saying here, so in the midst of that, when you decide that I'm going to live for the Lord, your very people that you think is on your side is not going to be with you. Matter of fact, your enemy may be in your own house. Maybe that man, maybe that woman, maybe those children. But I want you to be assured, he's telling you here, based on your salvation and your security in Christ, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. So what he's saying to, he's saying to his disciples, there he's telling those in Romans, and he's telling you and I, don't lose heart because God is for you. So whatever you're going through and whatever the struggle is, don't be lose heart. And what I like about this verse here and here, when you, when you read it, it says here, if, if God be for you, you know, some look at this, and this is not where I go on there, but he said, if God be for you in this verse, that, ver- that, that if is not a possibility. You know what it, it says? It's, it's, the, uh, it's not, when if is used, I forget what it's in the English, when it's used, uh, it's, I'll show you my English and went out the window. But, but anyways, it's not an if as if that is a possibility, but it should be read, since God is for us, who can be against us? I think it's a preposition. I think that may be what it is. I'm not for sure. But hey, an actuality here is that we being human beings, sometimes the very, we can be very try, it can be very trying to live in obedience to the will of God in this godless society. And it would seem sometimes useless and disheartening because the more you try to live for the Lord, the worse situation gets. The more you try to, to be faithful to the God, the worse your situation gets. People dislike you. You get problems on the job. You get problems in the home. And all you're trying to do is live for the Lord. But he said, if God be for you, but not if, but since God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? Amen. The point is be like to the point. I don't know if you remember Jacob. When Jacob thought when they had... Uh, took his son, Joseph, which was his favorite son, and he got disheartened. He felt he had lost all his support in the world. Sometimes you feel like you're living for the Lord, and everybody, even your family members, disown you. Look what it says in Genesis 42, 36. This is Jacob's cry. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And now you would take Benjamin. All this have what? Come against me. In other words, he said, the very people he was trusting in, he said, all oh, this has come up against me. You're taking the things I trusted in. But yet, as believers, we need to look at everything that comes against us as a reminder that God is for us. When people don't like you, God is for you. When the job is treating you wrong, God is for you. When that man says, I don't want to be with you no more, it's God is for you. If she sides, I'm packing up and I'm gone, God is for you. When the church said, we don't want you here no more, God is for you. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? In other words, a person that to be a bit, they got to be bigger than God. Never forget when I was a little, when it was earlier, my, my little son, Jeffrey, he probably was about eight, nine years old. And him and his, I was in the kitchen washing dishes. Yes, I washed dishes sometimes. But he, I was washing dishes, and, and we were living in Covina. Right out the window was where the kids would play. So I'm just listening to him, and, and him and his little buddy was, t- was arguing about who was the stronger. And his friend said, well, I, can't nobody be stronger than the Power Rangers. And I never forget, and it sticks with me, and sometimes I remind my son of that because they sometimes play that, well, all that God stuff. He said, nobody's bigger than God. Even Power Rangers is not bigger than God. So he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Because there's nobody bigger, stronger, powerful. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And if God is before you, why are you fearful? Amen. But that's good news to me. So I'm going to go in 2021 with what? Realizing if God be for us. Yeah, it's going to be some struggle. It's going to be some hard time. But if God is for me, who can be against us? I'm trusting in God's enduring love for me through his word. Yet, as we as believers need to look at everything that comes to us as a reminder that God is for us. There is nothing that can defeat us or cause us to lose favor with God, which means there's nothing going in your life. Let me say this here. You can't even send yourself out of the love of God. I, I know they don't sit right here, but you know, if I go out and do this, yeah, you may be out of favor with God, but God's going to always love you because you belong to him. Because God works everything out for what? For our good, to bring out the best of us for his glory. Let me say that again. Because all things work together for our good, for God's glory. Why? Because he's trying to conform us to be the image of his dear son. 
So, yeah, I'm going to have some hard times. But what? God is for me. Yeah, it may seem like they're getting the best of you. But don't give up. Look to God's word. Amen. Here's a verse that we all love. Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, this is God. This is Jeremiah telling the people of God what God has for them. They were going through some trying time. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and some hope. This is God's plan. And let me say to you that are here, God has a plan for you and he has a plan to me if you belong to him. He didn't say, I'm going to stop in here. He said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He didn't say that the gates of hell were not going to come against you. But he said they will not prevail. It will not be victorious. It's not saying that you're not going to have hard times. As you go through it, he realized, if God be for you, I love you so much, I'm not going to leave you to yourself. Come on, somebody. Amen. To endure opposition is, is the doubt in the midst of hostile time. So in other words, when you're going through something, don't, when you go through hostile time, don't doubt God. Oh, I know it's tough sometimes. There, I've had some situations in my life that I, God had to remind me. Terry, don't, don't, don't trust in people. Don't trust in your money. Don't, don't trust in anything, but put your faith in God. And sometimes we will think, and he has to remind me this, and I've been preaching now going on 37 years almost. And God has to remind me, because sometimes we're trusting in this and trusting in that. He reminds me, Terry, your focus is on the wrong thing. And I'm here to tell you, who are you trusting today? You ought to be trusting in God. Amen. And here's the thing that I love about it more than anything. How how did I get this love? It says here what? Christ died for us. Right? Isn't that what that screen says? He said what? Christ died for us. For us. I didn't get saved because I did everything right. I I didn't get saved because all of a sudden I, I walked down the aisle and made a decision for Christ. No, no, no. Christ died for us. And the wonderful thing about it, he did it before the foundation of the world. Amen. And look what he says in Romans 8 and 32. Paul kind of continued to bring this point here, trying to say, you can trust God. He says here, he, he, did, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how would he not also with him graciously give us all things? I like that. He who did not spare his own son. In other words, God loved us so much. He didn't spare his own son, but he gave his son up for you and I. John 3, 16. God so what? Loved the world. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son for you and I. Why? Because Christ, Christ died for you. Yeah. You were a sinner. We were on our way to hell. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. For all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Right? There are none righteous. No, not one. There's none that seeketh after God. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall save me from this body of sin and death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ who I serve with my mind. You got to know that if God be for you, who can be against you? Charles Haddon Spurgeon said something that I want to read to you and quote about this vain verse. He said, if God has already given us the greatest gift of his son as our savior and redeemer, is there any lesser gift that he will not give? If he has already paid the highest price, will he hesitate to pay any lower price? If he has gone to such length to procure our salvation? In other words, if God went to the highest height by giving his only begotten son, you don't think he'll give you the lesser things that you need to keep you safe here on earth? See, but some people say, well, I'm saving him. I don't know about this. I don't know about you. If God saved me, he can keep me. Amen. We always hear the benediction saying, now to him that is able to do what? Keep you from falling. And do what? Present you faultless, not in the presence of people, but in the presence of his presence. In other words, I don't care about how I look in front of you, but when I see Jesus, I want to look like him. I don't know about you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me slow down again. I feel good in 2021. All right. I hope you're there too. This verse has been misused by so many, so many people that when we should be rejoicing of the forgiveness of sin that we receive in Christ's death and that, that sin and death no longer have power over it, that Christ died to secure for us. But on the latter part of this verse is where people miss the point. We miss the point that Christ died for us. He gave him up for us all. No matter where you are in your life, Christ died for you. But here's the part where everybody mess up. Paul said, how God will graciously give you all things. Or do we like that? All things? 
See, all things to some people, when they hear this verse, they, they, they pass about Christ died to save you from your sins. They think all things means a new house, a new car, better life now. I, 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 at that book there, every time I see it on the thing, I say, I don't want my better life now. Because the Bible tells me if in this life I have only hope, I'm all men most miserable. I don't want my better life now. I'm looking unto Jesus. He is the author and the perfecter of my faith. And it says, it does not appear what it shall be, but it says, when he appears, we shall be like him. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or seen the things that God has prepared for them that love us. I'm glad this is not my better life now. You, you want it better now? No, no, no. I got something to look forward to. I got something where it wakes me up in the morning, no matter what this day brings, because God's enduring love. Amen. Amen. When you see that verse there, when you see the all things of the new house, a better life now, a new job, a good health, a husband, a wife, and all these things here, then you're missing the mark. The most important part of that verse there is eternal life. Christ died to give us life. And it's not just life at the death. Some of us say, well, well I know he's going to die or he's going to raise in heaven. But he says here, no, not, but it's now and forever. Jesus told his disciples in John 10, 10b, he said, for I come that you may have what? Life and that you might have it work more abundantly. Yes, you're gonna have life, suke, you're gonna have spiritual life now, but and then you're gonna have abundant life here, but it doesn't stop. It goes on into eternity. Meaning there is no end, there's no need to worry or, or, or fret about the persecution that comes to you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. So as you go through 2021, there's gonna be a hostile time. People's not gonna like you because you trusted in God's word. But because God's enduring love. Of God in Christ Jesus gives us graciously everything for this life and the life to come. Not only God will bless you here. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that God will not bless you here. God has blessed and he will bless you here. Man, they tell us every good and perfect gift comes from what? God. From God. Amen. And I believe this whole thing here goes even beyond that. Peter echoes the same theme when it goes into 2 Peter 1 and 3. Remember what I'm telling you? God's enduring love. Remember, uh, uh, Andre Krause says, I've learned to trust in God, and I learned to what? Depend on his word. Where well, his word tells us God's love never lasts, and look what he says here. He said, his divine power has granted unto us all, hear that word again, all things that pertain to what? Life. Amen. Suke and, and godliness, that, that godliness, the life you live here, everything that you need to live for the glory of God, you have it right now in Christ Jesus. Not based on what somebody said, but what the word said. I've learned to depend on God. I've learned to depend on his word. If it's going to work in 2021, it's going to be caused not what Terry Whitehurst did or what you did. It's because of what God's word says that Christ done for you and I. And he said, how do we get that? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory. Amen. I like that. John Piper, in his book, The Future Grace, quotes the Puritan John Flavor. And he says here, surely if he would not spare his own son, one stroke, one tear, one groan, one sigh, one circumstance of misery, it, may, it can never be imagined that ever he should, after this, deny or withhold from his people for whose sake all this was suffered, any mercy, any comfort, any privilege, any spiritual or temporal, which is good for them. In other words, if Christ sent his son to die for us, there's nothing he will withhold from you and I. That doesn't guarantee your healing. That doesn't guarantee all the blessings. But guess what? That means if God is for you, who can be against you? And it tells us in Ephesians, we have been blessed with what? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You have it already now. But you need to know that in the mice one head. And guess what? It was God's choice. It wasn't because you chose him. He chose you. He did it before the foundation of the world. Because there was no other way to redeem us back to him. Because Adam messed it up. And you and I were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. That you and I may become the righteous of God in Christ. So when he looked at me, he said, Terry, you look like my son, Jesus Christ. Can I talk about it? Amen. 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 Not only tells us that Christ died for it, but we find here Christ's death was substitutionary. Substitutionary. What does that mean? Substitutionary means Christ died in our faith. 
In other words, in our stead, the one that should have been on that cross was for you. It was for me. For we were sin, and we still sin. And we sin more than we should, knowing that we belong to God. Amen? But God gave up his only begotten son for you. And you're basically saying, it's what it, because you couldn't die for yourself. I look right here at 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. It says here, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God, righteousness in God. Let me say it again. For our sake, who are those say? Those who belong to God. Those who are saved by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He had made, he was made sin who knew no sin. Look, Christ never did anything wrong. But he took on him so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So now when you look at me, I'm righteous in Christ. You may say, well, Terry, I saw what you did last night. I saw what you thought about. I was going in your mind, but that's all right. God is not looking at you. He's looking in in my heart through Jesus Christ. You can miss this if you don't stop and realize it's not all about you. God did all of this for himself. It's for his glory and for his honor. So if you're going through some hard times, he's working it out for your good. Why? Because he wants to conform you to the image of his son. He's getting you and I ready for heaven. You think you're ready for it now. You're not ready. That's why you got to go through some stuff because he's trying to prune you and change you. God did it for himself. He brought us out of darkness into what? His marvelous light. Amen. Romans 8 and 33, as we walk through this verse, he said, so if that's the case, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justified. Look, like I said, who, who is it can bring a charge against God's elect? Who's those elect? Elect are those who belong to Jesus Christ. Who can bring something against us? The world and the devil they will try everything they do to bring every accusation they can. You ever been at work and people you see you do something, you may slip or say something or, or, or treat somebody bad or say something bad to them, and you're supposed to be a Christian. That's the first thing they want to throw in your face. But he said, who can bring a charge against it is God that justifies. In other words, the case has already been settled. It doesn't matter what people say. It's what Christ has said, God has said in Christ about you. Christ died for us. He paid the price for our sins, and he justified us. Amen? Amen. I like that. It's even that people will use whatever they can to get you to doubt God's forgiveness of your sins, of your past. People are, you know, and I, I have a, a person, and every time they talk to me, they always want to go back to where it used to be and what we used to do. But guess what? I'm not there anymore. God has forgiven me and brought me out of that old life and gave me a new life in Christ. He gave me a new song. He gave me a new hope. And he, I can sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heirs of salvation, purchase of God. Blessed of his spirit, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> but Paul reminds us, Christ justified, justified us. It's just as we have never sinned. When you're in Christ, it's just like, you know, you have done something wrong. When you really come to faith in Christ, it's just as you have never did it ever again. He puts your sins in a sea of forgiveness. He says the east and the west will never meet. You know, some people, I'm not going to say no names, they like to bring up the stuff you did in the past. Amen. But I'm so glad I don't look at what the past does. God has forgiven. Even if you don't, I've been forgiven by the power of God. And on one day, I will be glorified. Which is why there is what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's why I said what he said. What shall we say to these things? If God is for it, who can be against us? That's why there's no condemnation. Well, look at Pastor Whitehurst. There is no condemnation. Look at, look at Sister Ann. There is no condemnation. Look, look at, look at uh, Joy Olashia. There is no condemnation. Look at Sister Whitehurst. Well, there is no condemnation. Why? Because if God be for her, who can be against us? And then he stopped there in verse 34 in Romans 8 and 34. He said, who is it condemned? Christ Jesus is the one that died. More and more than that, who was raised? who is at the right hand of God and indeed is in the seat and for us. For those who are not sure of what Jesus Christ has done for them, and they're still today, you're wavering back and forth in your faith. Well, here, you have been justified through Christ. Amen? It's Christ that's keeping you saved. They said, who is it that condemns? It's Christ Jesus that what? The one who died. More than that, who was raised 
at the right hand of God. And sit at the right hand of God. That's the gospel right there. He died. He was buried. He rose from the grave. And where is he at now? At the right hand of the Father. And he's interceding for you and I. That's good news, church. Because in here, here's the thing we learn. And, and for those that are taking notes here, there's four things I want to leave you out of this one verse that ought to be a bedrock to your life. Very first thing we have here, Christ died to pay the debt that we owe for our sins. Christ died to pay the price for our sins. You couldn't do it, and I couldn't do it. All our righteousness is what? Filthy rag. I could not stop sinning enough. And even if I stop sinning, this body is sin that I live in. And I'm going to struggle with sin until the day I die. Amen? Amen? That's what you need to read. You write that down. If you want to be saved today, and if you, if you are saved and you're going to have some struggle in your life, remember Christ died to pay the price for your sin. Some people in here, they're feeling guilty about what you have done. If you confess it, matter of fact, he said he's what? Faithful and just to forgive you and to clean from it. Let me help you out with a theological truth. Even if you don't confess it, it has already been paid for if you belong to Christ. It's always messed me up because people say, well, you got to get there. In the Catholic Church, they tell you you got to get your last rites. Well, what if that person is out of conscience and they can't get their last rites and say the right thing and get forgiveness? Guess what? Christ has already taken care of it. Secondly, you need to write down, Jesus was raised from the dead to prove his victory over sin and death. Not only Christ died to pay the pet that we owe for our sins, but here, he was raised from the dead to prove he had victory over sin and death. And if you're in Christ, that's the reason why you and I need not fear death. I don't care what the doctor says or how many hours they give you or what they diagnosis for you guys. Just what? Because here, death is just an interest in the glory. Look what he says here in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 and 57. See, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But I'm glad he didn't leave us there. But look what he said. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he was raised from the dead, and he took the power from death and of sin. You and I can live victorious today because of Christ. Why? If God be what? For us, who can be against us? He said, I secured your salvation. I love you so much, I didn't leave nothing up to you. I did it for you. And the third thing is, he's at the right hand of God. He's at the right hand of God. And it's not him just being there. It tells us in Philippians 2 and 9, he said, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him a name that is above every name. That guess what? At one, name, one day, every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is a glory and honor to God. What am I trying to say? Christ died. Right? He died on the grave. He was raised from the grave. Right? And what he's doing now, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father because he knows your sinfulness and my sinfulness. He knows our deeds. And he says here, he's pleading our case before God. You know, one of the things about here, he's our great high priest. And back in those days, a priest would go daily to offer up sacrifices for the sins of the people. But it tells us in Hebrews 10 and 12, but when Christ who has offered for all time one single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. He died once for sin. When he offered that supreme sacrifice of his life, it was taken care of. Amen. And right now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father because his job, his, man, our salvation was secured then. But guess what? He knows that until we come back and come and get us, you and I are going to be living in this old sinful body. Sometimes you're going to be tempted to sin. You're going to lie. You may fall into sin. But he's interceding for us. Yes. Jesus Christ is interceding for us. And I know his saving work was done at the cross. He died. Remember he said, it is finished. But as long as we're still here, we have these sinful bodies. We're going to fall into sinful temptations. And if anybody going to sit there and say, well, I don't sin. I, I don't do that. Well, then I don't know who they are. Because he, he that says he does not sin is a liar. And the truth is not in him. We all fall into the temptations of sins, but we have an advocate before God. That is Jesus Christ. God's love goes beyond. That's why I said his enduring love. You can't sin your way out of this. God loves you so much, he didn't leave it up to you to take it out. If God before you, who is it against us? Who could bring a charge against God's elect? It is God that, what, that, uh, that, that justified us. I love this verse here. John pleads, and this is the love, and this is John the beloved here. He says here, in John, first John 2, 1 and 2, he said, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is our propitiation, our satisfaction for our sins. And not for ours only, but the sins of the what? The whole world. God so what? Love the world. Paul wanted his readers to know that we can have confidence in all that Christ has done to secure our faith. Why? His love endures forever. Then he goes to where all of us need to be, totally have confidence in Jesus Christ, Jesus' enduring love for all the saints of God. And he tells us this in 835, and I will deal with this even next week when I go later on in the chapter. He said, hear what I love. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Think about that. Who is it? If God is for us, and who can be against us? Is there anybody bigger than God? Anybody stronger than God? Anybody can take me out of God's hand? He says, guess what? Not even tribulation. And that word tribulation means things that happen in our life that press us. And in our life, you've had situations in your life, and you figure you're having a hard time. and feel like you just can't make it and squeeze it. But even that temptation or that, that tribulation period you're going through will not stop the love of God from extending to you. Or he says distresses. Those distresses means that, that uh, to tight places that you get in. And sometimes in the Christian life, you find yourself in a tight spot. Come on, somebody. But now only distress and persecution, people are going to talk about you, misuse you, and abandon you. Famine. We just went through a famine now, or going through a, a pandemic. Nakedness. When you're feeling destitute, you don't have no hope. Lord, I can't provide. He said he'll supply all your what? Needs according to him. You'll be in danger and swords. But guess what? God's love. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Verse we'll be talking about next week. When you know this here, you can say what he says. Here, we're more than conquerors through him that love us. And my question to you today as I close this sermon, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or you've been trying to satisfy him by being good? I'm not saying that you should not try to do things the right way. But I'm here to tell you God loves you. And if you have not repented of his sin, you may be in sin right now. you even listening to me and you're in a sinful state. Or something here. But he says here, if you confess that you're a sinner, you tell him to say, Lord, I, 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 I've been trying, but I can't do it. I can't stop it on my own. But I believe you are the son of God. And I believe that you did die on the cross for my sins. And I, I, I believe that. And I want you to come in now and be my Lord and be my savior. And if you do that, he'll forgive you of your sins. And you become his child. Then you realize Christ has already done it. Remember Salvation has already been secured in Christ Jesus. All you got to do is trust him. So if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that God loves you and his love lasts forever. So it's up to you if you want to know him as your Savior. You just confess that you're a sinner, believe it, and repent of your sin. That word repent just means you want to change. You say, I'm I'm tired of sinning. I'm I'm tired of doing things that, that God is not happy with. Then what do you do? Believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead. Then you receive into your heart today, and you'll be a part of the child of God. God bless you and God keep you. I want to pray for you at this time. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for those, Lord, who have listened to us today, Father, and those who are with us. We pray today, Father, oh God, that you would open them up, Father, and let them not surrender. Let them put all on the altar, Father. As they start 2021, Lord, let them not go into 2021 another day without having the forgiveness of sins and newness of life in you. And we pray right now, Father, you said whatever is bound in heaven has been bound on earth. Whatever is loose on earth has been loose in heaven, and you loose the power of forgiveness. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us for the sins that we have done. And we thank you, Father, for what you're doing even right now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. This time is now for those that know that it is our first Sunday. This is a, the first Sunday of the 2021, the first time we get a chance to commune. I know there are those who are, are so some churches are meeting now, but still here uh, at Good News. Uh, we we're, we're, haven't gotten to that point yet that we can come back together. We do have some seniors, and I just believe that sometimes, you know, you have to go. Everybody has to do what you, the Bible said. Anything you do not in faith is a sin. And God's just not having put it in my heart yet to open back up yet. 
He hasn't done that. And I, if I do it, I do it and not God has come in my heart and something happened. I, I, don't, I don't want to say I didn't trust God. But so until then, we will do communion like we do. And I, I know it says when you come together, together. Yeah, but we can come together in spirit, even have communion today. So we're going to take the, the, the bread that represents the body and the cup that represents his blood for the remembrance of sin. So this right here, we're going to do like we normally do as a custom. If you hear and remember, communion is for the saints. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it doesn't do you any good. You bring a damnation to yourself. And if you are a Christian, if you have not repented of your sin and, and came to Jesus Christ and you take communion, he says, you bring, I'm going to read the scripture and it's going to tell you some have been sick and some have even died. So here, I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles. I'm going to read to you the scripture that tells us here that Paul wrote into the church of Corinth about them abusing communion. And he says here, for I receive of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do it in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. For this you do as you drink it, as in the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the door of death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. He said, for this cause, many are weak. Remember I told you, if you take sin, if you take communion, you haven't repented of your sin. He said, some people get weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. People have died. This is the serious about that we're doing. For he said, if we would judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we shall not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together in the condemnation. And he says, the rest I will set in order when I come. So this time we're going to bow in a word of prayer. And then we're going to. Serve you the communion. For those that are with us today and you want to commune, we're going to ask that you would get your bread and get your juice. But we want to ask God's blessings upon these articles. Let us pray. Father, we come because your word has told us that as all together, we ought to do this in remembrance of you. And what we are to remember, Father, is what you did with your body, the bread that represents the body which you broke for us. When they came to you, Father, you had already given up the ghost. They didn't kill you, but you sacrificed yourself for us. You became that atoning sacrifice for us. And not only that, Father, you said without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So, our Lord, we ask that not only you bless this body, the bread that represents your body, but the juice represents the blood which you shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And, Lord, we know there are many. So we pray, Father, that you would sanctify this moment, that we would also, Lord, not only just remember what you have done then, but what you're going to do in the future. That, Lord, that your love endures forever. And that if you are for us, there's no one in the world that can be against us. So bless this time as we commune the things you've done for us through your son, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen and amen. <clears throat> I bless you. This time we're going to ask for those that are there. Uh, if you have your articles, we want you to take the bread. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's not his body. It's only representative of it. And he says that we have to take it and eat. So let's take the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and commune together. The juice represents his blood. All throughout the Old Testament, if you read the, in the scriptures, it says that the priest would always daily go into the sacrifice. And I think about that. It was like a butcher shop. That's actually what it was in the temple. It was a butcher shop where the priest would go in every day killing uh, goats and sheep to offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people. It was never ending. But Christ died what? Once. And after that, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us because we have the what? The forgiveness of sin. Let's commune the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he said the rest he was set in order when he come. 
Why? Because right now, you know what he's doing? He's interceding for you and I. Because you know, even though you're going to take this here, you may walk out of here right now and still do something that's not pleasing to God. But he said, if you confess your sin, which you agree with God that you are sinful, he'll forgive you. Amen? He poured out all his blood for you and I that we would have a hope to eternal life. So God bless you. God keep you. We want to let you know there's also this time for giving. Worship, we said last week, offering is, is to, worship is giving. He says it's better to give than it is to receive. And here, starting the new year, you want to start off right. One of the things I said here, not only do you want to give God your time, but you want to give God your resources. He says here, he didn't set a mount up. He said, as a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. You ought to give something to the Lord. And know for those that know, and as we've been going through this pandemic time, that there's two ways that we have here at Good News that you can give. For those that want to give, you can give to us. You can mail in your offering here to the church at Good News Church, P.O. Box 92954, Pasadena, California, 91109-502954. And for those who and for those who have been using it, and it's been a blessing for us here, is that you can use the Venmo Cash app and just put in there, Good News Church, Pasadena. And I say this because sometimes on Facebook and I look, there's a uh, Good News Church in Long Beach. But well, we want you to send your offerings to Good News Church, Pasadena. And God will bless you. We thank you for what you have done. We pray that this year of 2021, when they finally open it up, I would love for you to come and you can worship with us again. Once again, we could have our choir. We can have our praise teams and all those. Until then, we just pray that God's blessings upon you. Because remember, the best is yet to come for what God's going to do us to do with us and through us through Jesus Christ. So we want to say to you that we want you to continue to share us and like us on Facebook. And if you don't have it up here, you want to share the gospel. And I said earlier when this pandemic started, this is the most evangelistic time I've ever. Easiest way to be an evangelist for Christ is during this pandemic because all you got to do is subscribe to Pastor Terry Whitehurst on YouTube and share it with other people. And if you can tell people that you never walked up to, they'll look at your Facebook page. I, I have a thing on, on my Facebook. It tells me how much time I look on my Facebook. And sometimes, oh, I open it that many times. Wow. But guess what? You ought to be opening so people would saw it and share things about Jesus Christ. God bless you, God. Keep you as our prayer. So this time, as we're going to close, I just want you to sing with us as we start this year here. Yeah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. God bless you. God keep you as my prayer until we come together again. Now in the hymn that is able to keep you from falling and prevent you fall before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. May we all say together, amen. Remember at good news, everybody is somebody in the eyes of the Lord. Until we come together again, have a blessed week and happy new years.